visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. Welcome to Use and Care Training for the Clark SA40 Battery-Powered Disc Stand-On Rider Auto Scrubber. The SA40 provides excellent cleaning performance, high productivity, simple and intuitive operation, and flexibility to customize performance to your specific application for low total cost of operation. This training module will provide an introduction to the SA40 components and systems, the daily steps to safely and productively use the machine, and the routine maintenance and care steps for the machine. This course is not intended to be a substitute for the operator's manual that ships with the machine. It is important that you read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from your machine. After successfully completing this training module, you'll be able to identify SA40 components and their functions, describe pre-operation inspection steps, describe how to fill the machine with water and detergent, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, describe how to adjust the machine functions including solution flow, brush pressure, and vacuum power, explain machine cleanup procedure, describe battery charging process, and list routine maintenance steps and machine adjustments. This training will begin with an introduction of the components and features of the machine. We will then cover the daily use and care steps which you will follow for a shift of cleaning including machine setup and cleanup of the machine after the shift of cleaning. We will conclude with a review of routine maintenance steps. Overview of components and features of the SA40. Looking at the machine from the right side, the stylish SA40 design consists of a 12-gallon, 45-liter capacity solution tank with a fill port cap at the front and a second fill port at the back of the machine. A disc scrub deck system with 20-inch, 53-centimeter cleaning path. A pad driver with three lug connection interface is provided as standard, but the machine also accommodates optional brushes of various types. Linatex squeegee system used for recovering used cleaning solution. Recovery tank cover lid that can be pivoted out to access the recovery tank and other internal components. Steering wheel for machine control and extreme maneuverability. Non-marking traction drive and steering tire used to propel the machine during scrubbing and transport. Large non-marking rear tires roll smoothly even over rough surfaces. Dual cup holders for storage of other cleaning equipment like a rag and spray can or a cell phone. Looking at the back of the machine, we find the operator area, which consists of the operator control interface, which will be covered in detail just ahead. A latch for the top cover to lock it safely closed during operation. A solution tank level sight tube. Recovery tank drain hose to cleanly and easily empty the recovery tank contents into a drain. The second fill port for the solution tank is located at the rear and accommodates a hose. In the foot area of the operator are two pedal switches. The first is the operator presence switch, which must be engaged for the machine operation to begin. The second smaller yellow pedal is the go pedal, which enables machine motion system. On the lower front left side of the machine is the solution filter with isolation valve to allow the filter to be cleaned without draining the solution tank. The solution tank drain valve is located under the machine body on the left side above the scrub deck. Open this valve to drain the solution tank. The operator interface panel consists of the ignition key, horn switch, emergency stop, circuit breakers to protect the machine electrical components in case of a fault, machine speed adjustment knob allowing operator to control speed while transporting and scrubbing, motion direction selection buttons, scrub system on off button, Graphic display window provides valuable information about scrubbing and other machine information. Vacuum power mode button. Solution flow button. Scrub pressure mode button. And information button, which allows you to view battery status and hour meter while in scrub mode. Looking at the inside of the machine with the cover lid propped open. 
Cover prop rod used to safely hold the cover lid open while charging or accessing other areas inside the machine. The recovery tank with large opening for easy cleaning. The recovery tank can also be tipped towards the rear of the machine to access the batteries. The float ball vacuum motor protection system. Debris catch tray to capture large recovered debris to help prevent a clogged machine recovery tank or clogged facility floor drain. Charging cord storage location is just in front of the recovery tank. The charge status LED is located near the charge cord and provides information during charging process. And finally, the batteries which are accessible by tipping back the recovery tank. Preparing the machine for a shift of cleaning. If the machine was properly cleaned up and put on charge at the end of the previous shift, you should find the machine in this condition. The machine battery charger and cord plugged into a wall outlet to charge the batteries. The lid to the recovery tank left open. The squeegee and brush or pad driver clean and near the machine or already installed on the machine. To begin a cleaning shift, first unplug the charger and store the cord in its storage location. The storage location is just in front of the recovery tank. While the lid is open, inspect the recovery tank, the float ball cage, and debris catch tray and make sure that they are clean and ready to go. With this complete, the lid can be shut by disengaging the yellow prop rod, lowering the lid, and latching it closed. Inspecting and installing the squeegee and brusher pad driver. Remove the squeegee to do a proper inspection of the squeegee. To remove the squeegee, move to the right side of the machine and swing the squeegee to the right side of the machine to provide access to the yellow connection system. Disconnect the black vacuum hose by pulling up on the hose cuff. Squeeze the two yellow plates towards each other, releasing the squeegee system from the two mounting pins. Inspect the Linatex material squeegee condition. If the squeegee edges are worn or torn, flip to a clean edge now. The steps for this will be covered in the maintenance section of this training. Reinstall the squeegee and reconnect the vacuum hose. Remove the brush or pad to inspect it by grabbing the pad driver or brush and giving it a slight twist counterclockwise. Pull out the pad or brush and inspect. Inspect the pad or brushes and determine if there is enough life left in them to complete the cleaning process. If not, replace the pads or brushes as needed. Also, replace the pad if there is any tears or missing areas. When using a pad, replace the pad by removing the center locking system. Replace the pad and reinstall the center locking mechanism. Also, make sure you have the correct pad or brush type for the scrubbing that needs to be performed. An overly aggressive brush or pad can degrade the floor finish instead of just cleaning it. Reinstall the pad driver or brush when complete, being sure to engage all three lugs properly. The final inspection step is to give the machine a quick walk around and look for anything that looks worn, loose, torn, damaged, leaking, or out of place. Address issues found with the machine before using it for cleaning. Filling the machine. Fill the machine with water using either the front fill port or the rear port. There is a solution sight tube on the left rear corner of the machine that can be used to see how full the tank is. Warm or hot water cleans better, but the water temperature should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 54 degrees Celsius. If a wall mount system is going to be used to fill the machine, Fill the machine directly from the system. If water and detergent is to be mixed in the tank manually, fill the machine two-thirds full with water, add the detergent amount, and then fill the machine up to the top. Transporting the machine. Follow these steps to transport the machine. Turn on the ignition key. Look at the graphical display and verify there is enough battery power for intended cleaning activities. If starting a shift at the beginning of the day and the machine was plugged in overnight, the battery level should show all bars indicating a full charge. This initial screen will also indicate the number of hours logged on the machine. Turn the speed adjustment knob counterclockwise to set the machine at low speed. Step on the platform, being sure to contact both the large operator presence pedal and the smaller yellow go or motion control pedal. Select Direction of Travel from the two arrows on the control board. The active direction will have an LED indicator light. You can change motion direction at any time by pressing the other directional arrow. 
while in reverse an audible warning beep will continually sound. If motion does not begin immediately, turn the speed adjustment gradually clockwise and stop when you reach the speed you desire. While transporting or cleaning, you can continually adjust the speed control knob to comfortably and safely navigate. There are a number of ways to stop the machine. Lift your foot from the go pedal. Step off the machine to deactivate the operator presence pedal. Turn the speed potentiometer all the way counterclockwise to the very low speed or depress the emergency stop on the dashboard. Note, if the machine does not begin as expected when following the above steps to begin motion, verify that the emergency stop switch has not been activated and try again. Now let's get scrubbing. The machine includes a single button that with a single touch enables you to activate or deactivate the full scrubbing and recovery system. When you push the scrub activation button, the scrub deck and squeegee will lower to the floor and the vacuum will turn on. As soon as there is machine motion, the brushes will begin to turn and water begins to flow. All scrubbing parameters from the previous use will be remembered, so whatever scrubbing pressure, solution flow rate, and vacuum power setting will be remembered and re-engaged. To pause scrubbing, simply lift your foot from the go pedal. The machine motion will stop and all scrub functions will stop. The vacuum will stop after a slight delay to prevent dirty water from being left on the floor. To resume scrubbing, press the go pedal again. To stop scrubbing completely, press the one touch scrub activation button and all scrub systems will be deactivated. The graphical display continually provides useful information while scrubbing or transporting. Let's review the information this screen provides now. There are two modes for the display, transport mode and scrub mode. In transport mode, you will see the battery meter, the hour meter, and any error codes that may be present with the machine. In scrub mode, you will see the scrub parameters and their settings. In scrub mode, a small graph will be displayed for each scrub system parameter. The top filled box in the graph represents the active setting for that parameter. If there is an empty box, this indicates that a higher setting is available for that parameter. If all boxes in the graph are empty for that scrub parameter, that means that system is off. So for example, look at the solution setting. Here we can see the current setting is at its lowest setting, one box filled. But two higher settings are available, two empty boxes. Adjusting machine scrub parameters while scrubbing. On the control panel, there are three scrub parameter control buttons. The button furthest to the right is the extra scrub brush pressure button and has an icon of a brush and two weights on top. This button toggles between regular pressure and extra pressure. On the display graph for scrubbing, one bar is lit for regular pressure and two bars are lit when extra pressure is engaged and the LED light in the scrub pressure button will be lit. The standard pressure is 51 pounds and the extra pressure will apply 88 pounds of scrubbing pressure for your most heavily soiled floors. The center button is the solution control button. Starting from the off position with no bars filled in the graphical display, pressing it once will engage the low flow rate and one bar will be shown in the display and the LED light in the button will turn on indicating solution is active. Pressing the button again will change it to medium and then to high and then cycle to off. The last scrub parameter button is the vacuum power button. This button cycles through the three vacuum power settings of low, high and off. The lowest setting is the quiet mode low vacuum power with a single bar in the graph and the quiet mode LED will be lit in the button. Full vacuum power mode will have both bars in the graph filled and full vacuum LED button lit. Pressing the button again will turn the vacuum off where the graph will be blank and neither LEDs will be lit and your vacuum motor will be off. You can use the vacuum off mode for double scrubbing where you want to leave solution on the floor to dwell. For double scrubbing, in addition to having the vacuum turned off using the vacuum power button, the squeegee should also be raised from the floor to allow the solution to dwell for very heavily soiled or stuck on debris. To raise the squeegee from the floor, pivot the squeegee to the right of the machine as shown to provide access to the yellow connection area and vacuum hose. Disconnect the vacuum hose from the squeegee and flip down the double scrub kickstand to lift the squeegee off the floor. And then slide it back under the machine and begin to scrub. 
the front squeegee wheels will ride on the floor, but the blades won't be touching the floor, leaving solution on the floor. When finished double scrubbing, flip the kickstand back up again and reconnect the vacuum hose and recover the dirty water. To maximize your efficiency and safety, here are some good guidelines. Plan your route carefully to use as many long straight runs as possible to minimize turns and maximize productivity. Use a consistent overlap, enough overlap to not miss any surfaces, but not too much to reduce productivity. When cleaning along walls or shelving, use the right side of the machine since the scrub deck is shifted to the right providing greater visibility and control. The squeegee will automatically pivot back and out of the way. Consider the area being cleaned and adjust the machine cleaning parameters to be as efficient as possible. Example, if the floors are reasonably clean already, then you should have all scrub parameters set at low levels and only increase them if heavier soil load is encountered. Pay special attention to blind corners to avoid a potential collision. Finally, regularly examine water recovery and cleaning performance. If you are not leaving floors clean, safe, and dry, make necessary adjustments. Dumping and refilling. Eventually the solution tank will get used up and the recovery tank will become full with the recovered water. The SA40 has a ball float valve that protects the vacuum motor from ingesting water. Once the ball float valve activates, the vacuum motor pitch will change to a higher pitch sound. Usually you will run out of water before the float ball engages. When the solution tank is empty or the recovery tank full, transport the machine to a suitable dumping location to empty it. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from its storage clip and remove the cap. Bend the hose over to prevent flow and then release the hose to a drain. You can use your foot to control the flow if required. Reinstall the drain hose cap and put the hose back in its storage location after draining. If more scrubbing is to be completed, fill the machine again and go clean. After using the machine for a while, one of two things will occur. You will have completed your scrubbing task for the shift, or the battery will have become depleted to the point of requiring a recharge. Either way, the cleanup and storage process is the same. The battery indicator icon is like a fuel gauge for the battery power. When fully charged, all bars will show. As you deplete the battery throughout your scrubbing shift, fewer bars will show. Eventually, the battery voltage output will hit the machine low voltage cutout. When this happens, the display screen will change to what is shown and the scrubbing system will automatically turn off, but the vacuum and propulsion systems will remain active to allow you to dry the floor and transport back to the dumping and charging location. Storing the machine. Following proper daily machine cleanup activities will assure proper performance from your machine over time and help avoid bad odors that can accompany a poorly maintained machine with a recovery tank that is left dirty. Empty the recovery tank as previously discussed and thoroughly rinse it out and remove any and all debris from the tank. Remove and clean out the large debris catch tray and then put it back in place. Rinse off the float ball cage and make sure that the ball moves freely to protect vacuum motor. If using detergent in the solution tank and you have leftover solution at the end of the cleaning shift, the best practice is to drain the solution tank to prevent separation of the detergent and water causing solution flow problems. To drain the solution tank, find and open the solution tank drain valve located on the left side of the machine as shown. Remove and rinse off the squeegee and inspect it to make sure that the blades are not worn, ripped, or torn. If they need to be flipped to expose a fresh edge or replaced, do that now. Reinstall the squeegee back onto the machine. Remove the pad driver or brush and rinse off and remove any debris that may be present on them. Inspect the pad or brush and see if they need to be changed. If they do, do that now. Set brushes aside to dry or reinstall now to keep them with the machine. Charging the batteries. Unlock and open the recovery tank lid and engage the prop rod. This allows access to the charger cord and allows cleaned recovery tank to fully dry to prevent odors and allows the batteries to properly vent while charging. Plug the onboard battery charger cord located in the front of the recovery tank into a wall outlet to begin charging. 
the machine needs to get a full charge overnight after each day's use. Batteries will last longer when they are fully recharged after each day of use. Leaving the batteries in a discharged state will decrease the life of the batteries. While plugged in and charging, a green LED light located near the charging cord termination will indicate charge status according to the chart next to the LED. When the charger is in the standard charge stage, the LED will slowly flash. Once the battery is close to being full, the light will begin to flash more rapidly. Once fully charged, the LED will remain fully on and green. If a fault occurs with the charger, a yellow fast blink LED will be displayed. Contact service if this occurs. Finally, to keep the machine looking its best, it's a good idea to take a damp rag and clean the exterior of the machine. In addition to various pad types for use with the standard pad driver, a number of brushes are available for use with the machine if that is your preference. Squeegee maintenance. Squeegees will wear over time and their water pickup efficiency will be reduced with wear. There are two rubber squeegee blades used with the squeegee system. Each squeegee blade has four wear sides to help assure you have excellent water pickup. The front edge of the rearmost blade is the blade that is most critical to leaving a clean, safe, dry floor. The front edge of the rear squeegee should be free of wear and rips. If either squeegee is torn or ripped, the squeegee should be rotated to put a fresh edge to the floor or replaced. To flip or replace the rear squeegee, first remove the squeegee assembly from the machine and then release and remove the tension strap that holds the rear squeegee in place. Make the squeegee changes and then reinstall the tension strap and reinstall the squeegee. To replace the front squeegee, remove the four squeegee cover knobs and lift off the cover to allow access to the front squeegee blade. After flipping or replacing the front squeegee blade, reassemble the squeegee and reinstall on the machine. Squeegee tilt adjustment. It is possible that your squeegee may require a tilt adjustment on occasion. The indications for this are that the squeegee is having unusually high wear in the middle of the squeegee or unusually high wear on the edges of the squeegee. Wear should be even across the squeegee if the tilt is adjusted correctly. The rear caster wheel controls the squeegee tilt. Use tools to raise or lower the caster wheel as necessary. Reinstall the squeegee and confirm even deflection across the entire rear squeegee while in operation. Routine maintenance. Besides the maintenance steps that are done on a daily basis to prepare and clean the machine, there are also periodic maintenance tasks that should be completed. Weekly, you should, for machines that do not have maintenance-free batteries, check the water level of each battery cell and add distilled water as needed. Fill to above the lead plates and about an eighth inch below the bottom of the fill well but not all the way to the top of the cell to allow for expansion while charging. Failure to keep battery fluid levels above the battery lead plates will decrease the runtime and overall life of the batteries significantly. Caution: Batteries are filled with strong acid. Use care and protective equipment while inspecting and maintaining battery fluid levels. Clean the solution filter. The filter is located on the left side of the machine just in front of the brush deck. Turn the isolation valve for the filter to the closed position. Unscrew the filter cover, being careful to not lose the O-ring inside. Clean out the filter screen, reassemble, and be sure to open the solution valve or no solution will come out during scrubbing. Longer term maintenance. Monthly, the machine should be lubricated with grease. Use LubriPlate 730-2 or equivalent type of grease. See operator's manual for additional details and specific grease points. The carbon brushes in the vacuum motor, scrub deck motors, and propulsion system should be inspected for wear on an annual basis. Refer to the operator's manual or an authorized Clark Service Center for assistance with carbon brush inspection and replacement. The onboard charger is a smart charger that contains proper charging algorithms for various battery types like wet, AGM, or gel. Using the wrong charging program can damage batteries, so if you ever change battery types, be sure to change the charger program to match the battery type of the new battery. Information on changing battery type programmed into the charger is contained in the operator manual. 
If you should need to move the machine and you do not have the battery power to do so, you can release the electromagnetic brake built into the drive motor. Refer to the instructions in the operator's manual for this task. This concludes the instruction portion of this course. After successfully completing this training module, you'll be able to identify SA40 components and their functions, describe pre-operation inspection steps, describe how to fill the machine with water and detergent, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, describe how to adjust the machine functions including solution flow, brush pressure, and vacuum power, explain machine cleanup procedure, describe battery charging process, and list routine maintenance steps and machine adjustments. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.